So today I want to talk about finding all the divisors of the number n, when n here is a natural number, by hand. And I mean sort of in the sense that it's going to depend on how big this number is. So if n is really big, it's not feasible to do these things by hand. So you probably will have want to do it using a computer software or some other technique. So that's the idea. The idea is to do this by hand, but for numbers that are uh, a little bit smaller. So the goal of this video is to find all the divisors of n. So n is a natural number when n is a small number, as I mentioned. Now, a small is a relative term. So it probably is something that uh, you want to do depending on how patient you are with uh, your calculations. And by hand, you will have to, most of the time, we'll have to use a simple calculator to do some of the things that you will see in a second. Okay, let me start by looking at this theorem because the computations we're going to do by hand are going to depend on this uh, particular uh, theorem here that's going to help us uh, do the computations a little bit easier. So let me, let's stay with the theorem says. So suppose you have a natural number n. And then this follow of 2 and 3 here are two important facts that we're going to use. So the first part, number 1, says if you have that d1 divides n, so n here is the natural number, so you have a divisor of n, then there is another, and the important part here is that this is a unique divisor, d2 of n, such that n is d1 times d2. So basically what the first part is saying is if you have a divisor of n, there is another divisor, d2, so when you multiply this, those numbers is n again. Now, that is not really difficult to see, as you will see in the proof. The second part is probably the most important one, and is the following. If d1 and d2 are the numbers as we mentioned in part 1, then at least one of those numbers has to be less than the square root of the number n. Now, Adams, I'm not saying that both of them are less than the square root. At least one of them is. That's why we put an or here. So that's the theorem we're going to use. Now, the first part, as I mentioned, is that the one that you have a unique divisor. That part actually says something a little bit more interesting, and that is that the divisors of a number come in pairs. So once you have a divisor, then you have another one uh, that when you multiply them, you get the number n. And the second one is the one that at least one of the divisors is less than the square root of the number. All right, so if you don't want to see the proof, I'm going to put the minute where you can skip the video uh, so you don't have to actually wa uh, watch the proof if that's not what you are into. But if you are into uh, watching the proof, then just go ahead and keep watching. So I'm going to prove the first part. So the first part says if you have a divisor d1 of n, then there is another, and the important part here is that it's the unique divisor d2, so that that divisor, when you multiply it by the first one, d1, you get exactly the number n. Now this is an if-then statement, so I'm going to start assuming that d1 divides n. So we assume that d1 divides n. Now, by the definition of the divisibility, so what does that mean, this one here, and d1 divides n? It means that there is an integer d2, so that n equals d1 times d2. Now, this proof, of course, is not difficult. As you can see, we are almost done, basically, here. So we found that the other d2. D2 is also a divisor because d2 times d1 is n. So d2 is also a divisor here. Now d2 can be completely determined by n and d1. And the reason for that is because if you look at this expression right here, you can solve for d2. So d2 will be n over d1. So once you choose the n and the d1, your number and your particular divisor, the other divisor, D2, will be completely determined by this fraction. 
So that is why it is unique. So we have proved the first part. So that's why I'm going to indicate that by this square here to say that we are done with the proof. For the second part, let's look at this statement. So the statement says that if we have d1 and d2 that are the same as in part 1, so that means divisors of n, then at least one of them has to be less than the square root, less than or equal to the square root of n. Now we're going to do this by an argument of contradiction. So the proof is going to go by contradiction. So by contradiction, we're going to assume the negation of the conclusion. The conclusion here is this a statement here, d1 less than or equal to square root or d2 less than or equal to the square root of n. Now the negation of an or is an and and the negation of less than or equal is bigger than or equal. So we are assuming by contradiction that both of them, both of the divisors are bigger than the square root of n. And from there, we're going to get a contradiction. And so that will prove that at least one of them has to be less than or equal than the square root of n. So let's see how the argument goes. Now, if that is true, if d1 is bigger than the square root of n and d2 is bigger than the square root of n because all of these things are all uh, bigger than zero, remember we are in the natural numbers, then you can multiply these two inequalities side by side. So d1 multiplied by d2 is bigger than the square root of n multiplied by the square root of n and that's the statement uh, we have right here. So now if you simplify d1 times d2, the square root of n multiplied by the square root of n is, of course, the number n. So we have arrived at the expression that d1 times d2 is bigger, strictly bigger, than the number n. And that is, of course, a contradiction. So that statement is a contradiction. And there is a contradiction because we know that n is equal to d1 times d2 but we have showed that d1 times d2 is bigger than n. So, because it's a contradiction, then the statement d1 less than or equal to the square root of n or d2 less than or equal to the square root of n, that statement is true. So we are done with the proof of the second part. So that's the end of the proof. So that proves the theorem. Now, the question is, how do we use that theorem to do some computations? Now, the theorem actually says something important, and the important part of the theorem is that the divisors of any natural number n will come in pairs, d1, d2. So d1, d2 here are those d1 times d2 is equal to n, where the important part here is that at least one of them is less than or equal to the square root of n. That's going to allow us to find by hand the divisors of a particular number n, as we will see in the example. So let's look at this example. Find all positive divisors of 60. So in this case, that would be our n. So this number here is our n. n is equal to 60. So it is enough to find all positive divisors d, so that are less than or equal to the square root of 60, because once you find the ones that are less than or equal to the square root of 60, the other divisor is going to be determined by d because they all come in pairs. So I only have to do the ones that are less than or equal to the square root of 60. Now this part will need a little bit of calculator because you will need to find the square root of 60, which is approximately this number here, 7.74597. So I'm going to check all the numbers that are less than or equal to 7.7, .7, basically, all the natural numbers. So for that, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to 7, because that's all the natural numbers that are less than 7.7. .7. Remember, we are talking about natural numbers, so positive divisors. So we check if the, if the number 60 is divisible by all these numbers. Now, of course, it's divisible by 1, because any number is divisible by 1. Of course, it's divisible by 2. That number 60 is even. It is divisible by 3 because if you apply the criteria for divisibility by 3, you just have to add the, 
the digits of 60. 6 plus 0 is 6, is divisible by 3. 4 is divisible by 4 because you can divide 60 uh, by 2 twice. It's also divisible by 5 because it ends at 0. And it's also divisible by 6 because it's already divisible by 2 and 3. Now, it's not divisible by 7 when you apply the criterion for divisibility by 7. Now, I went a little bit quick there, and the reason for that is because I already covered the criterions for divisibility. So if you don't remember that, I'm going to put the link in the video description, and you're going to see something here also in the upper uh, right corner where you can check how you check for divisibility by several numbers. So in this particular case, we have divisibility for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but not for 7. So let's make a chart here. Uh, so the chart here is going to have two columns. The first column is going to be the divisors that are less than or equal to the square root of 60, which we know what they are. So it's the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, the ones that we found earlier. The second column is we're going to find the divisors that are bigger than or equal to the square root of 60. That's going to be determined by each corresponding divisor. So let's go through the computations. So for the number 1, the other divisor is going to be the number n divided by 1. So n over 1. So that's going to give me 60. So that means I have a pair 160. So that those are two divisors of the number 60 that they are the pair. Now for the number 2, we can do the same thing. So for the number 2, we have 60 over 2 will be the other divisor, which is bigger than this, bigger than or equal to the square root of 60. So that will be 30 in this case. And that will give me the pair 230. Same thing for 3, 4, 5, and 6. So let me show you. So here for 3, 60 over 3 is 20. So we'll get the, the pair of divisors 320. For 4, 60 over 4 will be 15. So we'll have the pair 415. For 5 is 60 over 5, which is 12. So that will give us the pair 512. And finally, for 60 over 6, that will give us 10, which is the pair 610. Now, those pairs that you see in the last column, that's going to give us all the divisors. So let's read those numbers like this. So let's start reading from up to down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then all the other way around 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. Those are all the divisors of the number 60. So the conclusion is that all positive divisors of 60 are the list that you see right here. So this is the list we found from the chart that you saw earlier. We are talking about the positive divisors. Of course, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on will also be divisors of the number 60, but we are looking only at the positive ones because that is enough. Once we have the positive divisors, it's just negate those, and then you get the negative divisors as well. So 60 has a total of 12 positive divisors and we'll have a total of 24 divisors if you count the negative numbers so here we have the divisors that are less than or equal to 60 which are the numbers 1 through 6 and the divisors that are bigger than or equal to the square root of 60 which is the numbers that you see right there 10 12 15 20 30 and 60. let me show you a picture to emphasize the idea that the divisors are less than or equal to the square root. Now, the graph that you see there in blue is the graph of the square root. And over the number 60, I'm putting the divisors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are the ones that are less than or equal to the square root. And the other ones will be the ones that are above it, above the square root. So let's see this animation. As this animation played, the ones that are bigger than the square root of the number are going to be up there. So it takes a little bit while because those numbers are a little bit high. So there's going to be 30 there that's bigger than the square root. And finally, the last one is going to be 60, which is also, of course, a divisor of the number 60. Again, the blue graph that you see there is the graph of the square root. So that will give you an idea on how the distribution of the divisors is related to the graph of the square root. So half of them are below it 
and the other ones are above it. Some of the divisors could be actually on the graph of square root. So let me show you this other interesting picture here. So what the picture that I have here is the red part that you see right here, this red one, that's the graph of the square root. The dots that you see here are divisors of the number. So for example, here for the number 60, above the number 60, I have the divisors that are less than the square root and above I have the divisors that are over the square root. Now, as you can see, some of the points that are blue here are over on the graph of the square root because some of the, some of, of course, some of the divisors are on top of that graph. Uh, you can actually see a little bit of patterns forming here, some of the triangles. Um, that is not difficult to see. This line that you see here is actually N. So y, y equals to X. And uh, also the other lines that you see over there are also another lines of divisor. So for example, this line that is here is n divided by 2 because some of the numbers n have divisors n by 2, not all of them, and so on. So that's why you see this pattern forming here with the divisors. Now, there's a more another important thing I want to mention before we finish the video. I will have here two columns, and the first column is the number n, and the second column is the number of divisors of n. So as you can see here, one has one divisor, that's this one, uh, two has two divisors, and so on. So that's the number of divisors that each uh, number has. You can see in the second column, one thing that is important is, if you look at it, most of the numbers on the second column are even. Some of them are not. Of course, for example, for four, if you look at four, uh, three, so four has three divisors, which is three is not even, of course, it's odd. Now, what is the thing that is happening here? So four, let's look at the ones that are actually odd. So for four, we have an odd number of divisors. For nine, we have an odd number of divisors. And for 16, we have an odd number of divisors. And so what happens there? So those are the exceptions for not being even, of course, and the number one again. What is the common thing that is happening here? So is even except when the number n is a perfect square. As you can see, 1, 4, 9, and 16, all of those numbers are perfect squares, and those are the cases where the number of divisors is odd and the rest is even. That is an important fact that I want to mention here for the last part of the video. And this is actually a theorem. So the theorem says if you have a natural number that is bigger than 1 and n is not a perfect square, then the number of divisors of the number n is even. So that's what we saw. Now this is a theorem. The table that we saw is just to check that is true in particular cases. Of course, you will have to prove this theorem in order to check that is true. So this, that's the last thing I actually want to say about uh, the divisor. So thank you very much for watching. Take care and good luck.